A pinch of fairy dust in your mortal shell. This is all I need to complete this spell. Welcome back to Neckbeardia, all of you still stuck in quarantine and waiting for the world to end just like me. We're back in the saddle with Stranded in Fantasy, starting off with Journal Entry 221. It was an expensive ticket, but we're on the way to Ashvale. From there, we can get to Aiden. Hopefully Alex is still there and hasn't run off. So we put all this planning into getting there, but what are we going to do once we do? I doubt the university is going to let us live on campus, not for the long term anyways. We've got a few days to think it through though. Austin and Ian still wake up in a cold sweat, terrified from their experience. Max seems to be doing better from it. PTSD is a pretty bad thing. Even I still wake up occasionally thinking I'm back on the barbarian hunt. I'll get back at those fuckers one day. So Avery's got it in her head that she's going to march into Alien Sun Church and start making changes now that we're aware of what's going on and she knows we have her back. Uh, it will get messy. Fuck, there's so many ways that can go wrong. I don't know if I should try and convince her out of the plan though. Anyways, I wonder how the kobolds of New Chicago are doing. Journal Entry 222 we made it to Asheville without incident for a change. God, the place smells from all the leather tanneries and lant processing and whatnot. We are in the process of switching over to another airship that will take us to Alien. We've been on this boat before. Crazy shifter captain that wants to be an adventurer, but isn't allowed, and an insane navigator. We'll leave soon. I'd pop over to the tavern for lunch, but I don't think I could keep my food down in this air. It should be a two-day trip. Austin's been asking the airship artificer everything he can about how airships work, and then spent some time sketching something on paper I gave him. Maybe he found his calling. An airship that doesn't break down constantly, or drop out of the fucking sky like a brick when it does. Marcus, in the meantime, has come to a startling realization. He's got an old girlfriend back in Alien and maybe more. <laughs> yeah. No sympathy here. You reap what you sow, and he's been sowing the fields across the continent. Journal Entry 223. God fucking damn it. So we're out all on deck while Marcus is desperately trying to play a Muse song on his guitar when we see a light ahead of us. The navigator adjusts course and the light shifts over too. A few seconds later, we nearly have a mid-air collision with another airship. Seriously, there's like one airship per town or less, so they're pretty rare. Only a handful of non-merchant companies have one in the world. And we almost have a mid-air collision with one flying at night. Are we cursed or something? Does this happen often? How is this even possible? Where's the fucking fantasy FAA? Christ. Journal Entry 224. <laughs> we made landing in A in this morning. Guess who was waiting at the landing pad? A very pregnant elf. How did she know we'd be here today? She didn't. She's been coming here every single day the airship was scheduled to return since we left. Marcus was paler than Mike and Winter when he went over to greet her. You know, he didn't have a choice in the matter either. Avery was giving him her smite look when it looked like he was going to run. He's got a lot of explaining to do. We had to explain what was happening to the others, but they caught on pretty fast. So we did manage to get into the university's dorm. They're on break with most of the students out and doing personal research right now and a big group of off-worlders with foreign ideas was just a thing to spread some excitement around. Our three newbies were apprehensive at first, having had their share of experimentation, but we reassured them. Alex was not around. He's out of the city with a group of adventurers who are going to go check out rumors of an old dungeon in the East Woods. They left a few days ago and should be back by tomorrow or the day after. He's apparently become a very skilled sorcerer apprentice. It's occurred to me that it's been a long time since we saw him. Will he recognize us right away? We've all changed quite a bit and I bet he has as well. Journal Entry 225 so I ran into the Master Artificer. He's mastered his bicycle design and they're all over the city for those who can't afford them. 
He fixed the traction issue, but it's still awkward, with the forward pedals and a harsh friction brake. Then there's the issue of people having to learn to ride one. Lots of crashes. Bicycle safety gear was invented shortly after by an enterprising merchant. It's more or less leather padding. Anyways, we had to talk about some things. I have been promised payment for my part in this. Once that happens, I'll introduce him to Austin and see what those two can do together. Avery headed off to the Sun Church but came back flustered. She went in with all of her righteousness and apparently got laughed out of the building. Better than getting stabbed, I guess. Marcus returned. Apparently his girlfriend is crazier or craftier than he thought. They went back to her place and had a nice long comforting talk and then she gave him a ring as proof of her love and devotion. It was a magic ring and he can't take it off. She knows where he is at all times now. The best part is that she bribed the university mages to not interfere and remove it. I wonder what weddings here are like. Journal Entry 226 I went back to the archives with Avery and Mike. We can read better than last time I was here so I don't need an assistant. But I got one anyways to speed things along. I believe that we may have been going about the search all wrong last time and we have a time frame now. So what happened 400 years ago? Well, the university is only 200 years old, but their archives date back further when there was a wizarding guild. 400 years. This was an elven city still. It was a time of change. Religion was starting to get organized with the building of the churches where it forced groups of vaguely allied cults. The age of sail was taking off and wizarding went from superstition and pointless ceremony to being more mathematical and scientific in its application. Were all of these brought about by Terran intervention or only some of them? We didn't find anything specific though, with names or who had their hands in what. We were informed that the old city records are currently in the care of the Peace and Love Church. We'll have to pay them a visit. Journal Entry 227 Well, I got paid for the Master Artificer. Not as much as I was hoping, but good enough, I suppose. I introduced Austin and they had a discussion about some things. He was impressed with Austin's aptitude and signed him up for the next artificing class when the break is over. And then the Rhinegraf spy master suddenly appeared and shoved a knife in my throat. I'm done. That's it. I don't know what happened after that other than I was on the ground and dying. Then I wake up with Avery pouring everything she had and healing me. The spy master somehow missed everything important or didn't cut the arteries right or something. So I'm stuck in bed. Healed but recovering. I lost a lot of blood. This shit's gotta end. So what happened with the spy master? The master artificer disarmed him and Austin started strangling him for everything he's worth and then he vanished. Fuck's sakes. Journal Entry 228 I got my rest and went out with Avery and Marcus and Marcus's girlfriend. We paid a visit to the Peace and Love Church. Well, it's a Peace and Love for Money Church. We managed to get into their city archives and start peeling through them circa 400 years ago. We run into a problem. Since the city was elven at the time, so were all the documents. Well, Marcus's girl can read elven so suddenly she's important to the cause. Well, 400 years ago a huge group of 100 or so people showed up, led by a group of 8. Purchased land in the city and started paid construction on the church buildings. There were complaints from the elven builders because the design was extremely unusual to what they were used to building, having buttresses, vaulted ceilings, and domes. So it was being overseen by one of the travelers who got things under control and brought in several innovations, such as a new kind of crane system that could handle heavier loads, scaffolding, and a new kind of mortar. For the longest time, the churches were the tallest buildings in the city. The techniques were adopted and used in further city development to make alien what it is today. Most of the churches used the same style, so this spread around all the major cities at the time. And there's more to it than that. As we were taking a break, Marcus's girlfriend pointed out something similar to what we were looking for. A thousand years ago, the elves suddenly moved from the woods and found an alien started using the quarrying techniques that they're still using and began making paper. They didn't have regular contact with the rest of the world at the time. 
If I remember right, that's around the time Wolf Lake was being founded and when most people believe that the massive bridge at Rosenbridge was sitting on is made. If this means what I think it does, I have a headache now. Journal Entry 229 Alex returned today. He was dirty, bruised, but in good spirits. He was with the adventurers he left with and they were successful with their expedition apparently. We all gathered up to meet him. It takes him a few minutes and then he notices Mike holding a nook and suddenly it all clicks in. He runs over and suddenly a group hug initiated. We spent the rest of the day in the tavern getting all caught up. The good, the bad, and the losses. Alex had his own adventure. He left for Aeon a little before Avery left for Wolf Lake. Fought bandits with magic he couldn't quite control and managed to make enough money for his airship trip and trailed along with a group of adventurers who were leaving Winterfield during its Civil War and made it to Aeon. He's been here since learning to control his wild talent. He had heard of some of our exploits from university staff and managed to get his own recharge stone made by the Master Artificer. So, for the first time ever in a whole year, we're all together again and we're stronger than before. We aren't the lost and scared children anymore. We're Terrans. When the world pushes, we can push back. Avery, put the damn journal down. I haven't been doing evil things lately. Journal Entry 230 So I was tested at the university today. They were trying to figure out how to get rid of that tracking spell that Ryan Graff's Spymaster apparently put on me. After four hours of having everything imaginable thrown at me, they concluded that there was no tracking spell. Well, how the hell did you keep finding me then? Sure, there are several ways he can vanish like that, teleport, or visibility, or the various other variations of the theme. They need more information. Well, great. I mean, he's already manifested in the middle of the Artificer's office once. God damn it. Anyways, Max has signed up for the wizarding course. He seems to think he has what it takes. Ian, on the other hand, is checking into fencing. Good for them. Unfortunately, for the rest of us, the university break is over tomorrow and everyone who is not a student or staff need to move out to make space. To make matters worse, all the ends are loaded up with people applying. Fuck it, we're moving in with Marcus's girlfriend until we can get a place of our own. It'll only be temporary. Journal Entry 231 Marcus's girlfriend, Raina, has a weird house. It's got two small bedrooms, a kitchen slash pantry, and then one fuck all huge room with no furniture. Well, at least we have plenty of room. Avery got the second bedroom, Marcus stayed with his beloved. Since we're staying with her, we're chipping in and paying for food and cooking. Jason and Avery went out house hunting while I did the shopping and helped with the cooking. I don't trust Mike with the cooking. He might accidentally add infernal energies instead of salt while preparing the meat or something. Marcus got the clean. Raina seemed bothered at first by the sudden appearance of seven of her boyfriend's buddies asking to stay over, but she's gotten over it and has been quite cheerful actually. So how long do elven pregnancies last? Nine months? If it's a half-breed like this one is, who knows? So how exactly do you deliver babies here, apparently with midwives. We wrote down a quick emergency map of the nearest five in town should the event kick off while we're here. Journal Entry 232 Okay, so we don't have enough money yet to get a more permanent residence. Rather than get jobs like regular people, we're going to go ransack a dungeon that requested the kingdom. The advisors were sending out calls for help. Since most of the adventurers in town were at the university, we picked it up. It pays well. There have been reports of strange lights and noises and they seem to think it's a cult or a feral race preparing to do something. Avery, Alex, and Jason are going with me. Marcus has to stay home with his girl. And Mike is assisting at the university with something. We have our MP3 players charged, some engineering gear, and emergency rations. Here we go. Journal Entry 233 It took half a day to get there. We rented bikes. It was cheaper than horses and faster than walking. I'm sure we looked ridiculous. So we managed to find this dungeon. Sure enough, I'm picking up mines inside. We go in cautiously. Jason takes the lead doing his thing. Bugbears, holy shit. I've only seen one or two and at a distance. 
They're feral. There's about 20 or so inside scattered all throughout the place. Jason takes out the front two sentries before they even know what's going on. After that, all hell breaks loose. One that Jason didn't see yells out an alarm. Alex starts throwing magic around like a madman. Lightning, fire, color sprays. The bugbears come running with bows and axes, blades, and the like. Avery decides that they're evil enough and lights up like a holy beacon and goes in swinging. I'm nearly blinded by what's going on, but I do my best at fucking up their archers' minds and making them shoot each other. Jason's apparently got no trouble seeing with that ruby eye of his and he gets in there. They pull a retreat and we advance slowly, me pointing out their ambushes and Jason clearing out their traps. The whole place smells like wet dog fur and sulfur. After we're done, we start picking through the place. Some coinage, a few pieces of gear that's worth keeping, and in the back we find what looks like a big glowing vase sitting on an altar next to some tombs. Avery states that it's evil. Well, none of us are going to touch it. We start looking for something we can use as tongs, and then there's a sudden bang, and one of the tombs slides open and a fucking lich walks out. He looks at us. He looks at the massacred bugbears. Looks at the vase thing. Then back to us. We're having a stare down. Not a word is said. He then quietly grabs his vase, steps back, and teleports out. Thank God. I didn't want to deal with a fucking lich and I guess he didn't want to deal with us. Anyways, we made it back to town around nightfall, collected our reward and went back to Raina's place and got some rest. Journal Entry 234 I got called to university for a while to assist the sign instructor with the demonstration. The usual mind rape. Just writing that makes me realize how used to this shit I've gotten. So what happens in the off chance I get home and I keep it? If I lose it, I don't think I could go home at this point. Maybe I should do what Marcus is doing and find a nice girl to settle down with. I guess that's what the previous group did. I don't even remember the faces of my old friends and family without having to look back at the old digital photos I have. That's messed up, but anyways, I went house shopping, nothing yet. I'm sure if Avery wasn't looking over my shoulder, I could force inherit one. You know, on second thought, I don't want to settle down and live like these people, these peasants. We're better than that. We all are. I don't want to be a king or anything like that, but there must be something better than this. Besides, I'm not ready to settle down. There are still debts that need settled. For Amanda. Journal Entry 235 So I was at the university again, checking on our three students. Austin's doing fine in his artificing courses. Ian's managed to keep up with his better trained peers in fencing through sheer determination. And Max. Max is doing better than fine. The instructor is apparently worried that his understanding of how wizarding works is spiraling out of control. Why? Max says it's mathematics. I guess it makes sense. The locals have a limited mathematics background while he doesn't. Because of this, he may very well bypass the instructor before the course is over. What's the problem with this? The instructor doesn't believe he'll have the wisdom or experience to throw around what he's capable of throwing around and may cause a catastrophe. He's pretty confident that he's under control, but if the guy that's been doing this all his life is worried, I'd fucking stop and listen. Anyways, aside from doing the normal stuff around the house and town, I've started looking to a trip back to Brightly and then seeing what's going on in Winterfield. I feel it's time to go back. I haven't told the others yet, not until I'm sure. It may very well be my end, or all of ours, but I feel it's something that must be done. I'll start poking around with the others, seeing their disposition towards this plan. As Avery is reading my journal right now, yes Avery, I know you are, I'm sure she'll come and tell me what she thinks. Journal Entry 236 A consensus has been reached. Aside from our three students, the rest of us will go. Marcus included, but only after the baby's been born. That could be tomorrow or in a few months. Well, I guess I have time to better plan out this little adventure. In the meantime, Mike is going to write a book for the university archive titled Earth. 
written in English and will contain just about everything, which isn't much, that we know about the situation should a group come sometime after us. The way things look from our research, there will most definitely be another group and who knows what they'll introduce to this world. We're certainly not done bringing change. The question still remains, who is doing this? I think I understand the why. With magic and gods, this world doesn't have any problems with stagnating. So someone brings us in to kick the world in the pants and force evolution. Just as we must adapt to this world to survive, so the world must adapt to us, I guess. We have pretty much have already made the Wolf Lake Orcs one of the most powerful militaries in the world, should they manage to take advantage of what we've given them. So will history remember us bringing the Age of Orcs and Gunpowder? Fuck, that reminds me. Who was behind giving the Wolf Lake Sun Church the materials to build a cannon? We're all here. None of us did. It can't be a natural development, can it? Or maybe it's just a coincidence. I just don't know anymore. Journal Entry 237 after thinking it through, I've decided that maybe the orcs being the only ones to have stirrups isn't the best idea. So we are going to give the tech to Alien and through that it will spread through the adventurers of other cities and nations at a slower pace and maybe we can make a profit off it on the side. I took Marcus and Jason that with me and we sold the idea to several of the right people. The guard will be putting them to use right away and they love the idea. Then there is Black Powder. To be honest, I'm still shaky with the idea of just handing out something like that, but it seems I already have. So we disclosed the formula with the University Master Alchemist and made sure he understood how dangerous it was. We don't need him blowing himself up while unlocking the mysteries of it, and I gave him a quick demonstration of its possibilities with my gun. I have this feeling of dread now that I've unleashed something horrible onto the world. Is this how Alfred Noble felt when he unleashed dynamite onto the world? Well, I'm no Alfred Noble. Far from it. Journal Entry 238 We had an incident today. The Sun Church decided that Avery wasn't spending enough time devoting herself to them and showed up at the house to take her back. I wasn't picking up anything resembling good intentions, just self-interest and greed. They want her badly because of what she knows, what she is, and there is a jealousy over her power. I don't know why there is jealousy, she's just a cleric. Anyways, Avery fought back and we had her back, even Raina. The pregnant elf apparently knows a little magic and threw up some distraction spells. When all was said and done, we sent those church priests back with their tails between their legs, but we've just opened ourselves up to their divine reprisal. I'm not sure what they're capable of in this city. So we've set up some fortifications for Reyna and have Jason watching the temple for activity. In the meantime, we gathered and watched strange days again. We had to explain everything to Marcus's girl and I know she didn't understand even a quarter of it. She was bleeding confusion the entire time. Speaking of her, she's got the weirdest mental signature. Might be a side effect of the pregnancy. Journal Entry 239 Marcus was in some kind of frenzy all day today and blasting fear and panic across the room hard enough that it almost penetrated my passive defenses. He won't talk about it though. Well, whenever he's ready I guess. Maybe the fact that he's going to be a father soon sunk in. Maybe he saw another old girlfriend in town. I don't know. We have Mike watching the church today. He's idly reading the Dune series on the Nook and set up in one of the street cafes near the church. Avery spent most of the day in prayer. I don't know if that's going to help in any way, but that left me, Jason, and Alex. So we went out and did some sightseeing and hit a few taverns along the way before stopping off at the university. Something was bothering me. When our trio of students were in captivity, some wizard friend of the Archmage kept taking biological samples from them for some experiments. I mean, why? They're human just like everyone else, right? The university is looking into it. They think it has to do with the fact that we're off-worlders and thus some people might think we're different because of that. So the same reason Avery was getting harassed in the church. Then again, we have taken extremely well to magic considering we're from a no magic world. Even psionics and sorcery, which aren't something that just anyone can do. 
I don't know what to think, and I await their results. Anyways, I think we're gonna drag Marcus out the tavern and get him blitzed. He's been suffering enough lately. Journal Entry 240 Alex came running in today, shouting. The church was on the move. Sure enough, paladins showed up at our door, ten of them. We had already left by then. We have moved Raina and Marcus to an inn, and snuck around town and seized control of their church and took the remaining clerics and priests hostage. Then, one by one, I erased any knowledge of Avery or us from their minds and sent them on their way. I found out why they're jealous of Avery. It's because the sun god talks to her, and he doesn't talk to them anymore. They can still wield his power just without as much force. Anyways, I implanted a small nugget in their minds. Jealousy of the Paladins. We made it out of there before the Paladins returned and made for the inn. We'll see how this plays out. Journal Entry 241 It's been quiet at the Sun Church, but we're keeping watch on it. We've moved back into Reyna's house and things have more or less calmed down for now. Austin stopped by to show off his first artificer project. He's building magic speakers and is planning on using them with his MP3 player. Well, okay, I guess. I don't think the locals are ready for our kind of music in all its glory. The last thing I want is to get chased out of town because Austin decided to play death metal or J-pop. Anyways, a festival is starting up tomorrow. Some old fertility festival that dates back to when Alien was an elven city and some of us, me included, have been drafted to help set up. It's money and I don't have anything else to do today. I do enjoy the fairs here. Simple, but with everything important. Good food, good booze, good music, and women. Journal Entry 242 It's been a total clusterfuck. The fair started today and we all go out to attend. So I'm flirting with some pretty red ahead when suddenly there's a scream of pain. Rain as water burst and she's failing it. Marcus ditches the stage. Avery recognizes one of the midwives in the crowd and we haul ass to a nearby inn, clear the table, and set her on it and assist in any way we can. The only painkillers we had was booze, unfortunately. So she's pushing and screaming and this goes on for hours and then it happens. It's a boy, Marcus's son. It's amazing. And then a fucking dragon smashes the inn and flies away, shooting fire everywhere, wrecking the fair, panicking the streets, guards swarming the area, adventurers shooting magic into the sky. The dragon just flies off. We dig ourselves out of the wreckage of the inn. No one was injured, but we can't find Reyna. Marcus suddenly starts sobbing. We get them back to the house and the midwife is currently helping deal with the baby. After everyone has calmed down, my mind clears enough to put two and two together. This is one seriously fucked up situation and I don't even know where to begin. Journal Entry 243 Reyna returned today. I couldn't even touch her mind. Either way, she had some explaining to do, and but she had other plans. First thing she demands is that the baby is named Katsukon. I think that's how it's spelled. Probably an apostrophe in there somewhere. Anyways, Marcus suddenly grows a backbone and demands that he be named Nathan. An epic argument broke up between the two that none of us wanted to get involved in. Screaming, hissing, magic gestures. We all decide it's a good time to not be here and go out the back with the baby and the midwife. After several hours, it suddenly goes quiet. Jason sneaks over and peeks through the window to make sure someone didn't suddenly get killed. Nope, they're both making out. And it was all said and done, they both got their way. Nathan Katsukon. Marcus apparently lost his surname in the fight. She then gives us an ultimatum. Get our stuff and get the fuck out of her house. Except Marcus. So we're back at another inn. Well, time to plan that trip, I guess. No time like the present. 
And that will end this episode of Stranded in Fantasy. And somehow, some way, that bard fucked a goddamn dragon, didn't he? It just never stops happening. Ah, uh, jeez. If you like this story and others like them, be sure to like and subscribe to Neckbeardia and click the bell icon so you know the videos are released through the week. Now, as a slight PSA, uh, you all may not know this, but I'm currently heading the Nerdbeardia channel and Neck Handles Neckbeardia channel and due to the coronavirus, well, our ads have been taking quite the hit and things are getting a little financially tight around here. But we're still going to try and get you guys your videos through the week and keep you entertained through this long, long process of isolation and bacterial whatever the hell. But yeah, we want you guys to stay safe out there. Wash your goddamn hands. Don't eat ass. And yeah, don't touch your face. This has been Guard Bro and I will see you next time.